I got my first corporate job in my early 20s. And when I marched into the CEO's office to share with him feedback about his disrespectful behavior towards me, he was shocked that I found that okay. I was shocked that he found it not. I grew up with a strong voice. It was supported, nurtured, encouraged, and empowered. And quite frankly, I got used to that. <laughs> and then I transitioned into adulthood. And I found myself in a corporate structure and a social structure that did not place the same value on my opinions, my thoughts, and my decisions that I had found in my youth. And it created conflict for me. Whatever it is we are here to do, to change the world is that what you want to do. Or maybe you just want to be the best person you can in your own personal tribe. Whatever your goal, the position you choose to operate from matters. Your voice, having power, having clarity, having a deep respect for self and a love of self, combining that with a respect and love of others, and falling in love with the truth is an important element of your voice. When we operate from a low power position, what happens is that dysfunction will be reflected in whatever you create. What system, what process, what community you seek to create will have that low power dysfunction. Welfare was never a bad idea. It simply was reflective of those dysfunctional, low power, traditional people that created it. As I sought to learn how to function effectively in this new world, I realized that this conflict I was found was one I was actually familiar with. Because as a child, I had often found myself a ping pong between two different parenting approaches. One that often came from a low power position and one that consistently came from a place of personal power. My father, having been brought up in a very dysfunctional alcoholic home and often being the responsible to his siblings, sought an education and ended up in a career in adult, in, in youth development. So as a parent, he came from a strong place of self-empowerment. And he's, he, he empowered. He always had power and he always gave it. And he nurtured and supported. My mother came from a very traditional household. Control and dominate. Hierarchy. That's how we live. And that's the way of the world. And she knew it, she replicated, and it's what she was comfortable with. So therefore, that is how she parented. And those two side-by-side -side approaches would play out consistently. It was so predictable. When my mother came upon a mess of toys that I had left, on the floor, she called out to her four-year-old just like this. Cora Celeste, you get in here! Control and dominate. And I did come in. Defiance shining in my blue eyes. And she said to me, you pick up those monkeys now! You know what I said? No! And the battle lines were drawn. The power struggle was on. These dynamics, they play out in living rooms, boardrooms, 
political meetings, policy makings, and human dynamics across this world daily. A four-year-old and a 40-year-old battle looks just the same. Now, in this script, in the business world, this usually means we go up to the next level of art, hierarchy, right? Or we call in HR, policy police. In society, this means you're not doing what I want you to. I'm going to call in law enforcement or any other governmental agency. I'm going to call you in. I told you what to do. You're not doing it, so I'm going to go to the next level of hierarchy. Does that sound familiar? Control, dominate. That is a very low power position to operate from. I don't feel control. I don't feel power. I'm going to control you. So my mother did that very thing. She asked for the next level of hierarchy in her mind. And her battle cry and call for help resonated throughout the house. Ronald! Your daughter is not doing what she told. And so you know his pre-prescripted script is to come in and make me do what I'm supposed to do. However, now I'm ping pong. When he shows up, he has a different script. By this time, I'm waiting. I don't want to pick up my monkeys. I'm into it. I I am, I am into the, I am into it now. My father shows up and he says, Cece, do you know your toy rules? There goes a lot of wind in my sails. <laughs> yes. Huh. Do you remember why we have Toy rules. Because so people don't fall. Yes. Because if you leave your things out, people can fall on them and trip on them. Although you are free to take toys out as you like, you must put them back so that people don't trip and fall on them and get hurt. It's a consideration of others. And in this house, we have respect for other people. <laughs> I don't want to put away right now. So it appears you have some choices. If you put them away right now, as you know, you can come back and join your family and watch the rest of Gunsmoke with us. The reward. <laughs> or... If you choose not to, then you get to take yourself up to your bedroom and you have to stay there until you choose to put them away. Now, if you don't want to pick up your monkeys, you do know that if I pick them up, you no longer have a barrel of monkeys. You choose, you decide. And he walked away. Power struggle over. He gave me my power and my choice. So when we look at these two approaches side by side in the same moment, it's powerful, isn't it? Because when we come from a low power position, we lose sight of the purpose. We don't even know why we're asking somebody to do something sometimes. We just know that we need them to do what we need them to do. The other thing we lose sometimes is ourselves in that. Oftentimes we behave in ways we are not proud of. The other thing we lose is a connection with others. We put so much distance between other people when we behave like that. Because what we're doing is putting all that energy in the battle. 
and we distance ourselves. The other thing we lose is connection with the truth and with the facts. This is the place where we start to make up stories. Oh, our minds are good at stories, yes? Oh, we can make up stories. When we don't have all the facts, our mind makes them up, and then our mind gets committed to them, and our mind is phenomenal at defending that because the mind wants to be right. And then we create these little fantasies, and our fantasies become our excuses. They become how we blame people, and then our stories and our fantasies become the judgments of others. And then that becomes the card that we pull when we either become uncomfortable or times get tough. A story is something like, she's such a difficult child. I don't know why she has to be that way. Those are stories. When we operate from that low place of power. Another place to operate from is when we have our own voice and our own power. When we sit in our own place of power, we get to connect with our purpose. Why are we having this discussion? Why do we have this rule? Why is this important? Why are we asking you to do this? And we get to connect with ourselves. What is important? If I don't want to be the toy police, if I, wanted to, I want to be proud of my behavior, I have to be in a place of personal power to do that. And do I want to respect others? Do I want to treat other people with a respect and a love? Because in that moment, my father knew, even at four, I was capable. I was capable of picking up my own toys, and I was capable of making my own decisions. He didn't need to fix me, and he didn't need to step in and run my life. In, in, in regards to toys. <laughs> he allowed me to make my decisions. What's important about the position we operate is it's not transactional. It's about the life we create. In this example, operating from that low position that's only going to escalate that power struggle. The more my mother would try to control me, the more I'm going to resist, and the more <coughs> friction we create in that relationship. When we operate from a position of power, we come from a very, we create a very different future. My father empowered me. Think about the different way I would behave in the future around that barrel of monkeys. The next time I go to take it out, I will think about it. And I most likely will put them away on my own. So as I transitioned into adulthood and learned to navigate between these two positions of power, I had the opportunity again to give a high-ranking high executive feedback on how he had treated me. Instead of walking in and trying to control him and tell him and coming from a place of low power, I implemented a lot of what my father had created in me. Somebody who had clarity, who had a strong voice, however, had a deep love and respect of self and others and was very committed and in love with truth. So when I sat down with a senior executive I knew going in what my purpose of that conversation was. And I knew I was going to treat myself with respect, but I was going to combine that with a respect for him. And I stuck to the truth. So when I shared with him that the way he patted my hand and patted me on the hand head was in fact demeaning and disrespectful, I shared with him my concern not just for me, but how did that look? outside of the organization with other professional women. I was concerned that others wouldn't take it and it wouldn't reflect well on him. And I wanted him to be successful and I wanted his respect and I wanted to be able to give him respect. When I shared with him in a loving way, 
it was received very well. And so although in my 20s I was fired, in this situation, <laughs> yeah, imagine that, I continue to have a very good relationship with that executive. So my question to you is, how do you want to live in your power? Because my hope for you is that you have clarity of your purpose and that you do have a deep love and respect for yourself and that you combine that with a love and a respect for others and that you do fall in love with truth, emotional truth, intellectual truth, And that when you go out to create or to change or to be whatever it is you want to be, you do it from a personally powerful place and that whatever it is you create, it will be reflected in your beautiful power. Thank you.